whether it is physically, mentally, or spiritually. When you know better, you can do better. And when you do better, you'll be better. On this podcast, we share knowledge, expertise, opinions, and experiences. All things that can help you to change the game. By the time we're done, it's hard for you not to be encouraged. So join us. The better you are, the better you are. Welcome back. And thank you so much for supporting our program. We hope that it's encouraging and uplifting for you. Today, we are going to talk about health, nutrition, fitness, and exercise. Our guest today is uniquely qualified to talk about these topics. She is Alta Skelton, the Director of Fully Armored Family Health and Fitness in Carmel, Indiana. Alta is a board-certified family nurse practitioner with master's degrees and advanced, and advanced certifications in integrative medicine and advanced cardiology. Her faith, her fascination with the knowledge of the human body, and her love for people are what motivate her to share that knowledge with others in order to help them improve their health mentally, physically, and spiritually. We're very excited to have her with us today, and we hope this is encouraging and helpful for you. So let's get started. So thinking about what we can eat, we know that salt in our food is, it can increase blood sugar, or sorry, it can increase the hypertension, that high blood pressure. So salt in food, and typically it's important to look at the back of that package if it's something packaged, it should not have high salt levels. You need to stay below 2000 grams of salt a day. If you're doing three and four teaspoons of salt on everything that you cook, and quite frankly, that's some in our heritage and our culture, yes. <laughs> we salt a lot of things, but we don't have to. There's yeah. different ways that we can season food mm -hmm. um, that we don't need the, the extra salt. What are so some of those ways? Absolutely. So herbs, herbs are so important as a matter of fact, and um, minerals too. So herbs, things like turmeric and other spices and we can use parsley, we can use um, celery, we can use um, garlic, we can use onion. Those give not only good flavor, but they also can change the body chemistry where now our ah. body, yes, and we call it the pH or we call it how acidic our body is. We don't want our body to be acidic. We want it to be more alkaline. So those things can actually decrease the acidity of our body and make it more alkaline. So you can even check, you can, you see alkaline water a lot, mm -hmm. but you can even check your pH. I tell people, go to the pharmacy, get some pH strips. They are at every pharmacy. You can you just urinate on that strip in the morning. If it's really, really yellow, yellow, your body is acidic. And guess what? Stress causes acidity. Now we want to make you more alkaline. So here is a very simple recipe for an alkaline drink. So you use parsley, half a bunch of parsley, put it in a bullet and put water and ice in it. And now you're going to add a little bit of lemon and then you'll add a little bit of fresh mint. So you put that in your bullet and you blend that up and you drink it. Guess so you what? go to the grocery store, you buy this parsley in the, the, the what is that produce section and mm -hmm. some mint and the bullet is a blender or, and you put that in there, whatever blender you have, you mix it up with some lemon juice and you drink it in the morning. Yeah, is that what you're saying. Amen. Drink that in the morning, and now, now your body is more alkaline and not really acidic. So that's important because if we are acidic, we break down our bones, we cause our body to um, be stressed. So you talked about that oxidative stress earlier. That's another type of stress um, if we're acidic. 
So we can also make sure that we're having foods high in potassium and magnesium and calcium, vitamin D. So think about bananas. Guess what? We really need to eat those bananas green instead yeah. of that yellow because now it's going to have higher sugar or plantains that are more green. They're nice and high in potassium and magnesium. So that's really good for our body as well. And you and, put those in into your blender eh? yeah. and make a, a drink out of that. Yeah. Or put peanut Absolutely. butter on it. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then you put in, if you want to make a smoothie, now you can add some of those extras. So kale and spinach and some of those green, you can hide the green. So if you're not a fan of kale and spinach, just put it in your smoothie mm -hmm. and put some berries in there. You don't even taste it. You don't even taste it. Mm -hmm. So then it makes it refreshing and your body needs that extra protein anyway. So that protein, by the way, makes it so our body has what we call the glycemic index. It's a long word, but basically it means how quickly is your blood sugar going to spike and then drop? Because when it spikes and drops, then we get more hungry and now we want to eat more. Mm -hmm. So if we have protein, it increases the blood sugar very slowly rather than something like a cracker or a cookie or a piece of bread, which increases that blood sugar really quickly. So that protein in that smoothie and all those nutrients, we stay full longer and then we don't have to eat as much. I agree. I tell people. I'm certainly no expert like you are, but you need to have protein with every meal you eat. And and it's not a bunch of carbohydrates, just, you know, bread and a donut and other things in the morning. You, you need to have some protein in that, even if it's with a drink. I tell my husband and my, my daughters as well, because that blood sugar spikes up and you feel good, energetic, and then it plummets and you feel like, oh my gosh, I feel so slow <laughs> and tired. And so you want to spread it out like that over the day. And so I tell my family, you want to have protein with everything you eat. It doesn't have to be a lot, but get a little bit of protein in there because they uh, not uncommonly, it's the easiest thing to, to grab. I I had to laugh at myself. Um, protein often requires that you cook it or, or unlike some other things that are easy to grab. And so that's why I, when I realized uh, I'm not, you know, I don't have the time, energy or knowledge to cook well, but um, to find some other sources of protein in, in my diet. Maybe you could talk about some things that have protein in it that don't require cooking necessarily. Yes. So one of the things that I like is think about um, protein bars. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to watch the sugar. The sugar. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bar that um, I tell my patients about a lot and they like this. It's called Aloha. Mm -hmm. And the Aloha bar only has um, four grams of sugar. And it has 14 grams of protein. So now you've got more protein than the carb so that your body, so you can grab those, put them in your purse. They, there's different flavors of them. Also, you can find low sodium because we talked about the salt, mm -hmm. um, things like chomps. And these are like beef sticks and turkey sticks. Throw those in your bag if you get hungry grab those and you can drink, you can eat that. And also you can get the, like the protein shakes mm -hmm. ready-made and throw that in your bag too. If you get hungry, you can just drink those. I had to laugh. My husband keeps a little stash for me in the car because I get a little hangry when I'm <laughs> hungry. So, and, and, um, uh, my daughter has a survival kit for mom, you know, you make sure you have this, that, and that, and that. Um, but yeah, those protein bars are really good in your purse uh, or something that's not just a bunch of sugar that's going to drive you up and drive you down. It's like that Snickers commercial, that <laughs> that one that said, you're just not yourself when you're hungry. <laughs> and and I said, oh, that is me. That is so me. And so my, and my daughter's like, it absolutely is. But you can't give me a Snickers bar. You have to get some protein in there and cut that sugar down. And that's why we're here today to talk about some ways that you can do that. And you sometimes have to just... Um, um, experiment with those protein bars to see which ones you like, which ones you don't. 
protein doesn't always taste good in those bars. That's why they add a ton of sugar to make it taste good. So you right. want to watch, as, as you said, how much sugar to the protein content is in there to make sure you're not just eating a candy bar that they called that they know, call. protein. But <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, what are, are there other sources of protein that, and they're like beans um, yes. and other things that you might... Um, one of the things you might even have for lunch, and it doesn't even necessarily even require cooking. So say that you just want a quick, you can make your own protein bowl. So you can put beans in there or chickpeas in there. And now you have your, um, you have your lettuce and your chopped up veggies and put some beans in there. So say you don't want meat at all. Now you've got your beans for protein and they have fiber Mm -hmm. So the fiber in the beans decrease the amount of sugar that is absorbed too. So fiber is really important in a meal. And so it doesn't even require cooking. You can open that can, rinse those off. They come in little packages. Think about tuna packages mm -hmm. or they'll have um, salmon in a can that you can have stash those. I tell people all the time. Now, this is a stretch for a lot of people, but <sighs> sardines are one of the ah. best foods that you can eat because they have high, what we call omega-3s are good fat and they have lots of protein. So good fat and protein, about 23 grams of protein per serving, no carbs. So I literally carry them <laughs> with me if I have a big enough purse. I'm going to try um, that. <laughs> and I always have it at work. Mm. So now I can tell you the smell is not the best <laughs> with the, the sardines, but no cooking with that. So tuna, sardines, salmon in a can doesn't even require any cooking. Now you've got even more protein. And um, I liked what you said about garlic and other things. I know I recall learning that garlic is good for the digestive system and other things. And, and one of the things I was thinking about when you're saying that people, you know, you could go and you could buy, you know, garlic and um, in the, you know, the actual plant, but you can buy by the seasoning. Yes. But you want to make sure you're buying, and for me, I learned to buy the powder and not the garlic salt. So you buy garlic powders, onion powders, other seasonings that are not the salt, onion salt, and you cut out that extra salt with it. And that those flavors, um, you get the flavor without the concern of the added salt. Exactly. Another food that has protein in it that is really quick. So you're, we call these MUFA. <laughs> so hmm. the mono unsaturated fatty acid. So mono unsaturated fatty acid are your almonds and your pumpkin seeds. Oh, yeah. You can grab those by the handful. Now be careful because they do have a lot of calories in them, <laughs> but they are good fats and they have protein. So that's another way to just stash. And a lot of times they'll have the extra a little fiber in there too. So that helps you be um, to get full. So almonds, pumpkin seeds, grab a handful of those. It's another way to kind of take some of that edge off when you're hungry. And um, since you mentioned fats, I know that, you know, I don't know if it's still as popular today because I don't, don't buy these anymore, but it used to be the, the sugar free um, or the low sugar. I can't remember what it was, but they, they, uh, or no fat free that I apologize, fat free, where they put in a lot of extra sugar to make it taste good, but take out the fat and some fats are good, eh? And we, so we need some fats. We don't need a lot of sugar. The sugar turns to fat. I mean, it was just you know, um, um, feeding into people's anxiety about high fat and, oh, you should go on this, you know, this no fat, fat-free diet, but then they didn't tell them about all the sugar that was just turning into fat anyway. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, yes. And so good fat is good. For one thing, good fat also slows down the digestion of some of those sugars. So having fat with your meal is actually good. So I don't mean a half a stick of butter <laughs> or lard. Mm -hmm. So that's considered what we call a saturated fat. It's solid at room temperature. Now, good fats are 
the what we talked about the seeds but also olive oil it's liquid at room temperature avocado oil liquid at room temperature is better to cook with avocado oil because it's what we call high heat so if you cook with olive oil it can denature if it's at high heat so low heat cooking with olive oil higher heat with avocado oil. So if you're stir frying veggies, you want to use avocado oil. It's a good fat and our body needs fat. Our brain needs fat. Our brain is mainly fat and water. So we can't cut out all fats. We need that. So those are olive oil, avocado oil, very good fats along with seeds. So chia seeds, uh, we talked about pumpkin seeds. Um, I often cook with chia seeds because it can be substituted as an egg in cooking and baking. Hmm. So you can also put those in your smoothie. And now you have good fat. Flax, uh, flaxseed. You want to get ground flax if you use flax. That way you get all those omega-3s from the flaxseed. So those are sources of good fats. And try to avoid those saturated fats as much as possible. Not that you can't have any of those. Coconut oil is even a saturated yeah. fat. And you need to minimize. So we do some advanced lipid testing, cholesterol testing, and we look to see particle number and particle size. Those saturated fats can make those cholesterol particles very heavy and dense, I liken it to a person going out and fishing. The bobber's at the top and is buoyant. So that is good. That's what we want our fat to be. It goes to the liver and gets disposed of. But those saturated, those hard, small, dense fats, they can decrease the integrity of that endothelial lining again, that blood vessel wall. So we want to stick with things that don't make those particles that particle number large. We want it big, buoyant. So those mono unsaturated fats, olive oil, avocado oil, seeds, those are the best ones. And as you sort of point out, they help you feel full. You know, they help yes. you feel like you ate something. And so you're not just then, so you need a little bit of fat. You need a little bit of fat. You need a little bit of, pro all, all things in moderation and not, and as I think you also suggested, you know, not that you never have, a cookie with some butter in it or something. Yeah. It's not taking away everything, but that that's not the mainstay of your diet because exactly. it's not good for you. But it's amazing to me. Uh, I think I I just prefer the taste of yes, um, you know, avocado oil and olive oils on my eggs and other things as yes. opposed to butter and other things. So once you sort of get used to it, you put the the seasonings you like on it. Once you try it. Um, um, that's a benefit. And I know that in your office, you offer cooking demonstrations and um, that people can, I believe, taste those things. I know you're going to be yes. kind enough to come to our church and do one. Um, and I think once people taste it, they're like, oh, oh, that's what it tastes like. Right. Oh, this is pretty good. Yeah. And that shake with that kale in it, you don't even notice that. Yeah, no, you, you taste the banana, you taste the fruit, you know. And so I think it's not as for me, uh, some people are like, oh, I could never eat like that. You know, once you try it, you're like, yes. oh, did you try it? Did you try it? Let's just try it. So. <laughs> Let's just try it. So that's what I like. I love about your office that they're able to come there and experience it. See how, for me, I like things to be easy. Some people love to cook. I'm not one of those people. So I want it to be easy and I want it to taste good. Yes. And so uh, certainly I think there are great options for that. Um. I want to, I want to move on to, unless you have something else to say about diet, I want to move on oh, to exercise. Okay. That was a great conversation. I'd like to move on to exercise because I think that's important too, for, for a lot, for mood, for, um, bone strength, for diet, for, uh, weight control and other things. So talk to us a little bit about exercise and how that benefits the body. So we know now that at least 150 minutes per week is what you need to shoot for, for the exercise. And we also know that that needs to be a combination of not only aerobic exercise where you're walking briskly or jogging or riding a bike. Usually that's about 30 minutes, but 30 minutes also of some resistant training. 
So that doesn't mean that you have to lift heavy weights. It can be body weight. But the more you resist that training or resist the um, and push up against that muscle, it actually improves the way you feel overall. And it helps to improve lean muscle mass, improve the insulin sensitivity of the cell, decreases blood sugar and blood pressure. So those are things that we know that not only the aerobic part, but also that resistance training, getting your heart rate up to take 220 minus your age. And that's what your heart rate should go up to. With some activity. And that, as you point out, doesn't have to be you're going to the gym and trying to bench press the highest amount you can bench. It might be at home. It might be walking around. You could buy ankle weights, you know, at TJ Maxx or something that that don't cost a whole lot, but you could even use water bottles in your house. You, as you point out also, you can use your own body weight yes. to um, to do things. And, and I always tell people, you start out where you are on your way to where you're going. So maybe you can't do that 150 minutes a week starting out. Maybe you do five minutes a day, or maybe you do 15 minutes three times a week, but start where you are. And then build up and your body will say, hey, this feels sort of good. I feel so. And then you're, you start to change the look of your body. Like I feel sort of good about myself. And then you keep yes. on doing it. And so, um, yeah, it's it, people are like, I don't have time to do it. There's somewhere there's time in there. There's, somewhere there's time. And you can even buy, um, you can get apps on your phone ah. and have exercises. So you may only have five minutes. The reason why I like, apps on your phone or videos is because you don't even have to think about what exercise should I do to get my arms strong? What exercise should I do to get my legs strong? It'll tell you. Mm -hmm. And so you can get that one, one that I use a lot is the Peloton app. Mm -hmm. So it actually has exercises. Say you have five minutes to do an exercise. You put five minute exercise. Mm -hmm. You can do dance Dance is a good way to get exercise. So there's dance cardio with weights, without weights. Um, there's boxing, there's uh, yoga, there's Pilates. So, so many different ways. And sometimes it's only five minutes. You can break that up during mm-hmm. the day. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do it in a half an hour straight because you may not have that. But say you may have five minutes. Go do a five, go do a wall sit for 30 seconds. That's our challenge for <laughs> this month. We put out a challenge every month. Okay. So our challenge this month is to see how long you can do a wall sit. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that. I'm I'm one who's <laughs> bad about taking challenges. I'll do things that like I would never consider doing, but but I'm gonna take that challenge. That's gonna be my challenge Excellent. to see how long I can do it. So um and a wall sit is sort of where you squat up next to the wall and, and just stay there as long as you can. And it sounds fine for about two or three seconds. And then you're like, I'm done. You're like, this is easy. You're like, uh oh, now my legs are shaking. Oh, I'm going to take that up. Um, I, and I was going to say, too, you can find, uh, look on YouTube and find different five minute, 10 minute, just, you know, tap in there, anything you want to do. You can go to a gym, but you don't have to spend money or, mm-hmm. or leave your house to do it. That's you right. Know? So I, that's um, one of the blessings we have with all this technology we have these days. Yes. Well, I'd like to, um, I don't know if you have more you want to talk about on exercise, but I also want to roll back and sort of end with stress. And yeah. I think that exercise release some stress, but there are other things we can do for stress. One of the things you already mentioned is breathing. I know sometimes, um, you know, something will happen to me where I'm walking to a situation at work or something, and I just have to, you know, take a breath or my daughters will call me and they'll say, you know, what do you think I should do to us at first? take a breath, you know, Mm -hmm. and then, um, and then pray. And so maybe you could talk about, um, prayer, um, and, and, and how that helps you, um, release some stress, even amen, praying before you start your day. Cause you know, you're going to face something as you're going right. through the day. So help me handle this as we go along. Um, but I just think that that prayer for me certainly is a big component of it as well. So 
That's what one of the ways that I, I start my day. Um, I have this funny thing. My husband even knows it's like, you know, um, it's me and Jesus before anything. So um, just praying and asking for guidance. So one of the things about a provider is that I know that it is not my knowledge. It is not me just knowing that I know everything because I don't. So Amen. I ask for guidance and say, Lord, can you help me? Give me the wisdom and the knowledge to help the people that you bring. Mm -hmm. These are your people. You know mm -hmm. their struggles. You know what's going on with them. So that's the way I start my day early in the morning on my knees before the Lord, asking for wisdom and guidance. That actually brings calm. That brings peace because I know I'm not going through this journey alone. Amen. I am hand in hand with mm -hmm. Jesus and he's mm -hmm. guiding me. And so mm -hmm. that is so very important. I do that before I enter into my exercise for the day, as a matter of fact. So then we talk about sleep. And I think that is so very important. when We think about what is it that is keeping us up at night? I tell people to buy some blue blocking glasses. You can buy them very inexpensively, um, about $30. They're the orange color glasses. You'll see blue blocking glasses that have a blue tint, but these will be orange. The reason is, is because when we look at screens all day long or we have lights above us, it's telling our brain, don't make melatonin. When we put the blue blocking glasses on, say you're on a screen all day long, you have that eye strain and that fatigue, melatonin is suppressed. If you're working on your computer all night long, you're not making melatonin. So ideally you cut off any screen time an hour before bed. If you're forced to use the screen, wear those amber colored glasses. Now you're making more melatonin and well, you can get in that good sleep. And tell us what melatonin is and why. Why does that help? So the melatonin is actually, it's actually in the brain and it is a hormone that says sleep. So as melatonin increases, our body naturally makes melatonin. As melatonin increases, now serotonin is going to keep coming down. So melatonin is that um, the hormone in our body that says, now we can rest we can relax, we can sleep. So melatonin is important. Another thing is if you know that you are struggling and you're not able to release that stress by breathing and sleeping well, I feel it's very important to seek godly counsel. You want someone that's coming along beside you that you can express those needs and you can tell them about your stress. Um, I do feel that godly counsel is important because you don't want them to just tell you anything, Amen. <laughs> having you do things <laughs> ungodly. And that helps to release that stress because maybe you're not able to find ways to deal with that. Surrounding yourself by a godly group of people, godly group of women um, for women or men, men are a little bit more hesitant to lock arms with other men to share their concerns. Mm -hmm. Women are very relational. So we typically will seek someone out and not someone who is going to tell you what you want to hear, mm -hmm. but who's going to tell you truth. Mm -hmm. So seeking mm -hmm. truth is very mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I tell people, you know, in programs I do, you, you want one or two people you trust and who can guide you appropriately um godly people who can give you the right advice and tell, tell you you're right when you're right you're wrong when you're wrong for me those are my brothers and my husband you know so it doesn't even have to be the same gender or the same um um race uh, it doesn't yes. have to be this you know and it, it but it has to be people you trust and who will tell you the truth as you point out um because sometimes you're like you get somebody oh girl i wouldn't put up with that i go do right. this da, 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 da. you don't need you need to hear some wise counsel and not That's some wise counsel some ungodly counsel but um so people you trust and it's not everybody and it's not but but i think uh, and i think we found this out during covid 
even more so, but when people are isolated and they think I'm the only one going through this, or I'm the only one, or there's no way I'm going to lose a hundred pounds. You're not trying to lose a hundred pounds. You're trying to lose five and then the next five and the next five, you know? And so um, there are people who have done that. There are people who are willing to help you through that. There are people like you that, that you can go to and get healthcare from and get um, dietary counseling and, and counseling uh, uh, about uh, stress management and exercise and diet that are not just here, take this medicine. And, and I want to say to people, um, diet and exercise can help reduce your need for medicine, or maybe not even need medicine, but do not stop your medication just because you've heard this <laughs> podcast <laughs> and make sure you uh, work with your care provider. I had my grandmother once when I first graduated from medical school, bless her heart. She's passed away. So I can say this story now, but she called me on the phone. And she said, you know, I'm taking, I don't know, eight different medications. I think I'm taking too much. And um, the doctor gave me this white pill for my my high blood pressure, the last one. I think I'm going to stop taking it. Now I'm over the phone. I can't see the pill. I don't know what the pill is. <laughs> and she thinks because I'm a doctor now, I can advise her on what to do. And I said, no, you don't um, want to stop that medication, particularly hypertensive medication because sometimes you get a rebound effect that makes your blood pressure shoot up even higher and you can stroke and pass out from not taking that medication. If you're going to stop medications, do it with your doctor or care provider so that it can um, come, you know, gradually get that effect out of your body system. But the good news is that with, with good diet and exercise, Oftentimes you can reduce your need for medicines or even not need to go on to medicines. And that's one of the reasons we're doing this as well. So uh, Absolutely. anything else you want to cover? I think we covered a whole lot and I really appreciate um, um, what you talked about and, and some of the things I'm going to try some of these tips you gave us. I'm going to, I don't know that I've tried the Aloha protein bar, um, but I'm going to, check that out. I'm a big fan of almonds and other things like that. So, and I'm going to take like that. Was I'm going to take that Wasit challenge. Ah! Just cause... <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully this was helpful for people. Knowledge is power. Food is medicine. Diet and exercise are good for everybody. Start where you are on the way to your, to where you're going. But, um, I can't thank you enough for helping us uh, learn some things. And the better you are, the better you are. So we're starting where we are to get better so that we can be better in the future. So thank you very much, Alta. Absolutely. This my pleasure. And it's been wonderful. And I love the fact that you're so passionate about this and getting the word out to people because it's what they need to hear. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening in today. Weren't you inspired, encouraged, and uplifted? We hope so, because we're praying the best for you. Join us again next time for more betterment, because the better you are, the better you are.